old burgundy big shelf of dirt, a dead rabbit, and uh, an old leather shoe. My favorite. Um, I mean, I remember when I decided to go to culinary school, but I had been cooking before then. Um, and I got my first first job in, in a restaurant when I was uh, 15. And uh, I was at this Japanese restaurant in my hometown. It was like hazing so that I had kitchen confidential. And I used to like throw the tempura cook in the garbage can at the end of the night. I used to wrestle in the back and place nets on each other. And, uh, you know, ever since then, I, I just was, I guess, addicted to that kind of environment. I really like the, uh, I don't know, it's like kind of an adrenaline-driven, you know, focus-centered environment. So. We got sunburn. I would describe it as uh, American food, um, which is part of this kind of newly emerging group of people, um, I guess, who are you know, kind of finding their you know, American cuisine. You know, a handful of chefs that are kind of uh, creating their own kind of food in America over the past 20 years, but especially in the past uh, five to 10 years. Um, and so, for the Bay Area, I'd say that it's it's a you know a food based on you know the locale of the Bay Area. It's largely based on what's available here about uh, the food culture here. You know, it's just one of the few places where you have uh, you know great wines, great seafood, great meats, and amazing produce all together in one. Um, and then also uh, people who, who love all those things together. Uh, all those things come together to create you know a food culture that doesn't exist many places in the, in the country, I think. And so, uh, I would say it's uh, American, regional, based on the Bay Area. Yes, all, good luck. Uh, and race is fantastic, of course. Uh, one of my favorite meals uh, of all time is actually when uh, Laurent Grau was at the fifth floor in San Francisco. Um, probably seven years ago, six or seven years ago. Uh, I had a couple, I mean, I've eaten there a few times when he was there, and, and, I, and I think the, the very first time or second time was uh, my favorite meal that I think I've had in the States outside of Urasawa in LA. Um, when we're talking about, you know, just high-end food, there's lots of casual stuff that I absolutely love and that I eat, eat all the time. Uh, yeah, I had a great meal at uh, Corton. He definitely thinks outside the box. He's just a very forward-thinking chef. Wearing any uniform and t-shirt. Yeah, I still remember reading Thomas Keller's cookbook when I was in uh, culinary school. And uh, I think all of us, uh, probably in my generation, were always um, in awe of that book. It's just beautiful, perfect, imaginary place out in California. I'm from the East Coast originally, and, uh, and so you know, we, we I only envision this far off distant land of, of the French Lawn. Throughout my travels, there's always been these chefs who have been, you know, at the stove, and they would die at the stove of these restaurants, and those are always the most magical places. Not necessarily in a you know Michelin three star environment per se, right? But the food is is the craft and the integrity and the purity behind the food is is that way. There's this alley in Beijing where this guy roasts meats out of this little wood oven. It's like four generations old or five generations old. And uh, you walk around the corner and you smell it. And it's like the most pleasant smell in your mouth starts walking. And you go in and you see the you hear the fire crackling and you see the fire roasting. He's got this long pole and he's just roasting. The fire's actually in front of all the meat and the meat's behind the fire. Really interesting. And you walk in and it's just turning and he's been doing it for so long. And it's just roasting meat. It says it's solitary focus. And it's so precise, even though it looks so rustic. Right. And there's there's an incredible depth to that kind of stuff and that's what I attract to. I mean, I'm here from um, 8 in the morning till midnight every day, so that's my life. It's a craft, it's a way of life, and then cooking, and I, I think cooking at this level is always just, it's just something you do, it's part of your life, it is your life, it's all consuming.
to be dedicated to a craft like this is, is, is kind of thoroughly, it's fulfilling. So that's what I do for fun. What's the difference between a uh, truck full of uh, bowling balls and a truck full of babies? I don't know the bowling balls are pitch for. For me, it's about being here and, and you know evolving as a as a chef and as a restaurant. So um, and as a cook, you know, um, because ultimately that's that's for me. That's what I'm here to do.